Uh, anyway, uh, this morning, uh, okay, I'll just be completely honest with you. I, I have a habit of being honest to the point that I tell people stuff that I probably shouldn't most of the time. Uh, everyone's like, wow, he's an idiot because I, I'm just honest. Um, I was like completely stumped on what to talk to you guys about this week. Uh, it was last night we were here at like 9.30, I guess, and I was finishing writing everything down just because I, I feel like when I get up to speak to people, especially when I get up to speak to the church, if I'm not saying the right thing, if I, not that I'm not saying the right thing, but if I'm not you know, telling you what God wants you to hear this morning, then I failed completely. No matter if I do a really good job, if I tell you the wrong stuff, then it's a complete failure to me. And, you know, I, I just want to, I want to tell you what God wants me to tell you today. And that's it. You know? And uh, <laughs> this morning, it's, it's, uh, it's more of an idea, I guess. Because me and Natalie have talked quite a bit that if we could really get a, an accurate view of who God is and what God is like, uh, then we wouldn't struggle so much. And that sounds bad, but just hear me out. But if you could really just picture what God is like, then all the stuff that we, we think about and all the stuff we worry about, all the stuff, the money, the you know, whatever, and trust me, I'm speaking directly from my own life. I, that's another thing. I try not to ever get up and talk about something that I'm not experiencing because, you know, it's not like... You know, I, I, ha- I worry about money, I worry about stuff, and I think that if I could really get a, a, a view of what God is really like and who he really is, then all that stuff would kind of just, just fade away. Uh, all that stuff would not matter so much. And so I want to do something a little different this morning. Uh, I just want to talk about three things, basically, who God is, who we are, and so what. What does that mean? Um, so I wanted to start this morning... I just, I'm going to read a lot of verses, I read uh, and I, actually an entire chapter uh, out of Revelation, but uh, I, it's for a purpose. I want you guys to really, if you'll do me a favor this morning, instead of getting out your Bible and reading along with me, it, it, this is weird, I'm telling you, but if you maybe close your eyes, maybe try to, to picture what's being said, and I'm not the greatest like reader, and I don't have like a, what's James Earl Jones voice, or I'm like, you know, but uh you know, try to try to stay along with me. Try to picture, you know, what is actually happening in these verses, uh, because if you can really picture it, I'm telling you, it, it'll, it kind of it takes your breath away almost. It, it's it's crazy to think about what's going on right now, uh, with God in heaven. You know, um, so uh, let's start off actually in Isaiah six, verses one through five. And I just want to read these verses first, and then we'll, we'll move on to Revelation. But uh, in verse 1, it says, in, that year, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, and with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Um, it says actually in, in verse 4, it says, And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. It, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You know, this is Isaiah, and he's, he's spent his whole life, and now he's coming to this point, and God's actually giving him a vision of what he's like. And you know, we don't see this God that's like, hey, what's going on? You know, we see God high and lifted up, sitting on a throne in this smoky room, this gigantic, and it says the, the train of his robe is just filling the entire room, which... I can't even fathom it. That's weird because where is everyone standing if the train of his robes everywhere? Like standing in and amongst it like, oh, hey. Uh, and my favorite thought on this is that these seraphim, we, we think about angels, and you see these angels and they have wings 
and they're covering their face because they can't even, they can't look at God. You know, they're covering their feet because it, it's, uh, you know, disrespectful almost. And they're flying, and all they're doing all day long, back and forth, holy, 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 holy. You would think that God would get tired of that. <laughs> I know uh, I would get tired of someone saying something very long. But, but it, it's, that's the thing. It's God. He's just, and these two beings, that's all they do all the time, every day, all day. Holy, holy, holy. That's how holy God is. You know, they, they can sing about that. They can speak it back and forth for eternity because that's God. You know? And the first thing that Isaiah says is not, wow, cool, man. Yeah, I, I sometimes think, what would I think about you know, when, you, when you actually meet God, when you get to see him face to face? And there's a song I, I can only imagine, I think. And uh, he's talking about all the different things. And the first thing I was like, I don't I would fall. <laughs> Just what could you possibly say? I'm a man of unclean lips, and I'm seeing the God, the Lord of hosts. You know, I think it would immediately just just crush you almost. Because you would see not only this, how holy God is, but it shows you how depraved and how sinful and how kind of awful you are. Uh, let's move on. I want to read, like I said, the entire chapter, Revelation chapter 4, and it's kind of a, a very similar scene. Uh, oops. I have to put place markers in my Bible so I can look like I'm really smart and know where everything is. <laughs> See, too honest sometimes. Um, oh, wait. Oh, I'm in. Hang on. Even when I have page markers, I go to the wrong place. There we go. Uh, all right, like I said, if you could, try to, try to, if you don't want to close your eyes, I understand, because I don't like to close my eyes and not be able to see what's going on. But try to, to picture these things. I have a, it's, it's really to a fault. It's insane. My imagination just runs wild all the time. I, I read something, and immediately it's popping in my head, and I'm seeing what's going on. And that's just, that's the way my brain works. I'm sorry. Uh, sometimes it can be bad. Ask my wife. I think of really weird stuff. Uh, she's like, how did you think of that? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, just, just try to picture this. Try to, to get it in your head, to get a picture, and, and put yourself in the place of the person who's actually describing this and that you're seeing all of these things. Because I'm telling you, if you can get this, this, this view of it, uh, it, it kind of, it'll show you something about who God is, number one, and who you are, uh, which, is, which is really important. So uh, it says, After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard speaking to me, like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, and one seated on the throne and it says, And he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Uh, when I'm reading this, I'm, like I said, I'm picturing it. I hope you're picturing it too. But sometimes you can't actually think of that. You, know, you, you kind of see God, and he's sitting there, and he looks like a stone. You know, but just try to get this idea of the, the most precious thing in the world to these people, these, these precious stones, and this is how he's looking at God, and that's what he is. Uh, let's continue. It says, Around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders, clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. It said, From the throne came flashes of lightnings and, uh, and rumblings and peals of thunder, and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was as if as it were, were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures full of eyes, in front and behind. Okay, you can keep your eyes closed, but just think of this for a second. Think of what these creatures are. They're full of eyes. Everywhere on them is just eyes. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. You know, we only have two, so we, we see stuff with our two eyes. And some of us, you know, I've met people with only one, and, you know, some people don't have eyes at all. Uh, or can't see them, whatever. Um, but think about these, these beings, and they just have eyes all over them. Everywhere, every part of their body is eyes. You know, and all they do all day long is they're watching God. They're looking at God. They're beholding 
the glory of God. They're beholding who this God is, what he's like, you know, the holiness of him. Um, okay, and there's four living creatures like, oh, I'm sorry, let's go back. And uh, on the throne each side, full of eyes, uh, in front and behind, the first living creature like a lion, and the second living creature like an ox, and the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. Uh, and the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. I, I don't know if you know the Revelation song. But that is a, it's a beautiful song. It comes from these verses. But because of all their eyes, you know, think of this for a second, but because of all the eyes that they have on them, all they're doing is beholding God all day long. They can just see him. They see who he is. They see what he's like. And because of that, all they can do is say, holy, holy, holy. I mean, that's, if you were there and you were really looking at God and seeing what he was like, that would be all you could say too. There's not anything else. You're not going to be like, hey, God, who's going to win the Super Bowl? You're not going to care because you're standing before this holy God. You know, the things of, of us kind of would fade away because you're seeing who he really is. And all that can come out of their mouth is holy, 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 holy. You know, it's an amazing scene. Um, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And verse 9 it says, And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Okay, just, I hope that you can get that scene. I hope that you can envision what that's like. You know, to actually be standing before this God that, it's to the point where you're not caring about anything else. All that you can think about is how holy this God is, how set apart he is from anything that we are. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, the, the thing, I try to picture it, you know, how far apart it is with us and God. You know, because you, I'm a, like I said, my imagination, I always just want to picture it and see what it's like. And the first thing I picture is like the Grand Canyon. You know, I'm standing on one side of it, and he's on the other side of it, and that's how different we are. I'm like, wait, he's way more different. And I'm like, okay, the, the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean or, you know, the moon or Mars or whatever. And then you just, you can't even, there's no way to describe how different we are, how far apart we are. You know, he, he's one that is set apart from sin. He can't be in the presence of it. It has nothing to do with him because he's holy. You know, he's different than us. Okay, um, so we've got an idea, a portrait of who God is. You know, we see he's this holy being that is, I mean, right now, right this minute, there are these beings in heaven that are actually just sit, standing there, sitting there, however you want to say it, and all they're doing is saying, holy, 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 holy is the Lord God of hosts. Holy, 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 all day long. That's what they're doing, all night long. That's what they're doing, you know? They're beholding the holiness of God, okay? Second part, who we are. This is where it gets kind of the, uh, you know, because you, you look at God and you're like, oh, man, you're so holy and awesome and high and lifted up. And there's, there's so many songs, there's so many ways to, to describe who God is, and it, and it still feels inadequate. You still feel like you can never fully get it out, okay? Then you look at yourself. You look at man, and you're like, oops, <laughs> This isn't going to be as good. Uh, so the things I wrote down for man, and this, okay, uh, what I wrote down was who we are, and then un- kind of put a or were. Because if you're, if you're a child of Christ, if you're a child of God, if, you're, you, know, if you know Christ, then this is different. But uh, you know, this is to look at who we were if you're already a Christian. If you're not, this is who you are. I'm sorry, not trying to step on toes, but that's just the truth. Uh, but what I wrote down was depraved, wicked, evil sinners. Uh, and, and the Bible actually describes us as enemies of God. You know, uh, it doesn't describe us as people who just aren't that close to God. 
you know, people who are just kind of doing their own thing. It says enemies of God, you know, people who are actually standing against who God is. Uh, <laughs> in Genesis 8.21, uh, we'll read that verse real quick. It says, And the Lord, let me make sure I'm in the right place. And the Lord smelled the burnt offering on the altar. I'm sorry. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Okay, just picture that for a second. You know, you've got on one hand how holy and different God is, and then you, the first thing it's really talking about man is that every intention, okay, it's not just the things that we do, it's even our intention. It's the thoughts that just pop into your head. It said every intention are evil from your youth. You know, so we're seeing, okay, we're different from God. He's holy and set apart from sin. We're constantly just right there in sin, thinking about it. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next one. John eight thirty four. Oops. All right. It says Jesus answered them, "Truly, truly, I say unto you." Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. Okay? So we've got this idea, number one, that we're, our intentions, every intention of our heart is evil. And then we get this next thought that every time, every person who commits a sin is a slave to sin. So number one, we're, we're intentionally thinking about evil. And number two, we're slaves to sin. Uh, and this last verse, Romans 5.10. It says, for uh, if while we, were ye, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life. Okay, the rest of that verse is really good. Uh, the first part is what I want to focus on. It, it calls us enemies. Uh, think about that for a second. Think about what an enemy is. Uh, like I said, it's not just someone who is, you know, I'm just on, I'm another different country or whatever. I don't think like you. Now, an enemy is someone who is, is directly opposing the things of God. You know, if God is holy, then we're directly opposing holiness. You know, that, that's, that's the picture of who we are or were, uh, you know, that, that God is setting forth in the Bible. You know, the reason I'm telling you this is not so you're like, oh, man, he's trying to bum everybody out. Uh, the idea is not that. The idea is simply if you look at who God is, and then you look at who we are or were, and then you think about what God did, the fact that he came down to us. You know, God didn't say, hey, how about you guys all do really good stuff, and then maybe one day we can, you know, be friends, and we can have communion, and then we can actually, you know, have a relationship. You know, God didn't look at us and say, hey, do this stuff, and then we'll be cool. God said, I see who you are, I see how low you are, and how you know, wicked and whatever, and instead of asking you to work your way up to this, think about it. Wait, wait just a second. The very fact that we would think that we could work our way up to God, it just says, it shows how wicked and evil we are. Because really, I told the teenagers this this morning because I was, this was on my mind, so I was thinking about it. But uh, it's like, a lot of people view all the different world religions as, you know, standing on the sides of a mountain and we're all climbing up to the top and then we'll get to the top and we'll all see, oh, we were all right, cool. Uh, you know, and that, I had a world religions professor who said that and said some really other weird stuff. And uh, the idea, though, is it would be like we're standing there at the edge of this mountain and we don't have any climbing gear and we don't have any arms and legs, and we don't have any ability to do anything. We can't even climb up the mountain to where God is. We have no ability. And God looks out and sees that and says, well, I'll just come down to you. you know, we're the only religion in the world where God actually comes down and, and meets us where we are. You know, the very thought that we think that we can get to where God is, is it's, it's a scary thought. It's a wrong thought. So the idea is, or the thought that I'm trying to get across is that if we, can, if we can really get this accurate view of who God is and what he's done for us, 
you kind of, you take a look at that, and then you look at your stuff. And I'm talking about your things, your, your car, your, your money, your whatever. And then I'm talking about your stuff, your, your baggage, your, your issues, your problems, your health, you know, whatever that is. Wow, awesome. Uh, you know, I'm talking about that stuff. I'm talking, you look at who God is and what he's done for us, and then you look at this stuff over here. It begins to kind of be like, hmm, that stuff over there doesn't really matter that much. I'm not saying that you're like, I'm saved now, everything's cool, because it's not. You know, I, I, there's, there's months where there's a lot more month than there is money. Uh, there's, there's times when there's, you know, really bad stuff. I have, uh, you know, sickness in my family and uh, all kinds of different problems and stuff going on. Uh, you know, bad stuff still happens. But the thing is, when you look at who God is, you know, in relation it doesn't matter. It's like I talked about last week, uh, or last time I was up here. Uh, it's like the man who, who's in the field, and he trips over this giant treasure, you know, and he goes and he sells everything that he has so he can buy that plot of land where the treasure is. You know, all of a sudden, all of his stuff doesn't really matter because he sees what's truly important. You know, he sees what really matters. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you guys this morning. That's what I'm trying to get across to myself, you know, is that when I, when I look out, and I look at this, this God that's, that's seated in heaven, you know, and that is so holy, and that there's actually beings that just are, are constantly just holy, 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 all day long, all night long, for eternity, forever. Holy, 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 holy. And then I look at this bill for, uh, let's see, we got a bill for a doctor stay for Amelia this week for... $200, $300, something like that. Uh, you know, and I look at that, and I'm like, oh, this is bad. I don't want to pay that. And I look at who God is, and I'm like, oh, well, who cares? Uh, and, and it's not that you're just like, oh, forget life. You know, don't worry about that stuff. It's that God is so much greater than any of this stuff. You know, and it applies to that, and then it applies to the stuff that you want to do. You know, uh, let's say you think, well, you know, I feel like maybe I should go and uh, Let's go to the extreme. I should be a missionary to uh, Mozambique. I don't know, that just sounds like a cool name. Uh, I want to <laughs> be a missionary to there. And then you look at your stuff and you're like, oh, I got a lot of stuff here. And that would take a lot of time. And I'd have to go to school and learn the language and all that stuff. And you're like, eh, never mind. <laughs> I'm cool where I'm at. I can, you know, be a missionary for Christ right here, which you can. But if God wants you somewhere else, you know, you look at all of your stuff. And then you look at who God is. And you're like, it doesn't even compare. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And uh, that's what I love about those verses in Isaiah is because when you look at Isaiah and the way his reaction to who God is, it's not the reaction that, that I typically would think about. You know, I, I think that you know, Isaiah would be like, you know, just wanting to join in and be like, holy, 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 or wanting to sing a song or, you know, whatever. And you see what Isaiah does is he's just like, oh, no. You know, that, that's almost, you can hear that in his, and it's what he's saying. He's just like, oh, no. I am a man of unclean lips. You know, I am a sinner. I am wicked. I am evil. I'm unclean. You know, when you look at who God is, it, it brings out who you really are. You know, it, it's like a mirror. And, and sometimes you look at the, you, you've, I've heard of the Ten Commandments being like a mirror. You know, you look into it, and then you look into who you are, and it shows you really all the bad stuff. It's not fun. Um, but just the point that I'm trying to get across, and, and then I'll be done, is that God is so set apart, so different, so holy. You know, the fact, just the fact that he simply decided to let us know about who he is, you know, just that, that in and of itself. And think about this. Let's say that you have all the worst stuff that you, you're having the worst life ever. You have every disease. You have no money. You have, uh, you know, whatever. You, every time you sneeze, you, your wax shoots out of your ears. I don't know. Just <laughs> the worst stuff I can think of, bad stuff, bad stuff. Uh, you know, and you have all this stuff, and you pray, God, please, please help me, please help me, please help me. 
And God never does anything for you. God never helps you. God never gives you money, never gives you anything. He never makes the wax problem stop. Uh, you know, whatever it is, is God still worthy of praise? And that, that's the question that, that I want to leave you with this morning, I guess, is, is do we love God because of all the things that he's done for us and all the things that we, we want him to do for us? Or do we love God because of who he is and that's it? Because even if God wasn't doing good stuff, and God does great stuff, you know, God has worked in my life in amazing ways, and I'm very thankful for that. The point is, he doesn't have to. You know, there's no rule that's like, God has to be good to us if we're Christians. You know, that's not in the rule book. The idea is, God does what he wants. It is, it's his creation, it's his stuff. He can, it's like, I, it's my toys, I'll take them home if I want to, you know, uh, that's, that's the thought that I see when I get with God. And we look at it and we're like, well, what a jerk. You know, God's not, you know, it doesn't matter what we think. God is God and we're not. You know, he's allowed to do whatever he wants. You know, he's allowed to be whoever he wants. And that, that's the idea. That's the question that I'll leave you with this morning. Is do we love God for the great things and the great life and the American dream that we want and, you know, all these things? Or do we love God because simply he's God? And he deserves to be loved. He deserves to be honored. He deserves to be praised. You know, I, I would ask you, I, and I'm telling you, I'm not just up here like, you guys are all bad and I'm awesome. You know, because it's, it's the same thing I'm asking myself every day is why am I, in love, am I really in love with God, number one? And number two, is it because I want stuff and I want a better life or I want just a decent life or whatever? Or is it because of who he is? Is it because he deserves it? You know, is it because he's holy and set apart? So I'd ask you this week, this month, the rest of your life, whenever you want to do it, uh, to, to look into your life, to look into your motives, because that's what really matters. You know, your motives are everything. Your motives are what, it, it makes the difference between what stuff means. You know? So look into your life, look into your motives, look into what you do. And really weigh it against, do I really love God or do I just love his things? And, you know, we've all had that friend. <laughs> I, I promise this is the last thing. Uh, but I had this friend when I was in uh, elementary school, and he had a Sega Genesis. And that was like the coolest video game of all time at that time. And, you know, I really loved him because he had a Sega Genesis. And I could go play with I didn't really like him that much. He was kind of a nerd. But <laughs> I was like, I'm going to Mark's house because he has a Sega. Uh, you know, that, that's just what it was. And that's how I've had to look at it in my life. Do I really love God because he has all this stuff and he might give it to me and he can give me a good life? Or do I love God simply because he deserves it, because he's worthy of praise, because he's worthy of honor? Uh, let's pray. Lord, thank you once again just for giving us a, a time to come together a time to meet together in your name, Lord. I thank you for giving us a, a country where we can gather together in your name. Lord, I pray that you just work on our hearts Lord, this week. Just work on, Lord, in our minds and just help us to see, Lord, what our motives are. Lord, if we truly love you because of who you are alone, Lord, if we would truly love you if you never did anything good for us at all, just because of who you are. Lord, I love you. I pray you just give us, Lord, I pray you just draw us closer to you. In your name I pray, amen.